The latest update for Kerbal Space Program 2 has really turned things around. In fact, I'd go almost as far as saying this may completely redeem things. So the game, you may well remember, had a chaotic launch back in the early part of 2023, with a lot of things not working and very poor performance all round, not to mention many missing features. Thankfully then, a lot of the problems may well be in the past. The science update brings a new game mode called Exploration, which to all intents and purposes is the same or similar to the science mode from KSP1. So we're going to talk about that today, as well as the general community reaction, which I may add is extremely positive. Also a massive boost in player numbers. And before we get to all of that, what about performance? Well, performance is way better than it was back on release, uh, but you know, it's not perfect. There's still numerous problems. Right here, you can see one of my older saves when up in orbit. The performance is pretty poor, and this is running at 1440p on an RTX 4090. And the CPU, meanwhile, is a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. But I do really want to underscore here that these performance issues were just related to this particular save and this particular vehicle. And when I started a new save in exploration mode and had some basic vehicles, there was really no performance issues whatsoever. So yeah, elsewhere I've seen a few other people talk about performance, and although it's not perfect, it doesn't seem to be getting overly in the way. So let's talk about the exploration mode itself. This is basically a campaign. You'll get missions from the Mission Control Building. I do believe there's 11 new primary missions that have been added, and 30 secondary missions. I suspect that more will be added over time. Now, as you complete these missions and other objectives, you'll gain research points or science points, and you can spend these to unlock new ship parts in the research and development building. Naturally, that means all the advanced parts are locked away for later, and you start the game with just a few select components. But these are more than enough to get yourself up into orbit, and if you really know what you're doing, you may even be able to get further. The general feeling here then is that this now feels very much more like a game rather than the sandbox mode, which was perhaps, shall we say, a little bit directionless. It's all too easy to get started then, and there's not much you can do in the way of going wrong. You just need to assemble a very simple craft. In fact, for the first mission, you don't even really need to get yourself up in orbit. You just need to get yourself higher up into the atmosphere. You can then conduct a science experiment, and if you've once you return it down to the surface, you'll get the scientific points for this. This will allow you to unlock a little bit in the research tree. Now, as we look at the research tree, you can see there's a lot of different tiers here, plenty of stuff to unlock, and this will allow you to explore the entirety of the Kabola star system. Elsewhere, the developers have inserted a few new points of interest. These will form some of the bases of some missions where you'll have to go out and actually explore these. You need to land down near them and perhaps do a bit of research either near them or on them, and this will unlock further research points for you. Uh, but the point is here that these do give you some objectives and goals to actually aim for. Additionally, if you get stuck or you're just finding things a little bit too hard, they've also added a new cheat menu into the game, and this will allow you to well, basically cheat if you so want. And I don't really see any problem with that. This is a very difficult game, and if you're finding it a little bit hard or if you've got yourself stuck, then this is a great way to work around that. Additionally, if you're really into the science, and I'm sure you will be with this mode, then they've added some new science components that will allow you to do various different experiments when up in space or indeed down on the surface of other planets. Further, the long-awaited heating system and re-entry effects have also been added into the game, so yet yeah, no easy mode when re-entering the atmosphere anymore back on Kerbin. You won't be, uh, well, you won't be having an easy time of it if you've got no heat shields, for example. So yeah, overall, this seems to be a really nice update. And to be perfectly honest, this is exactly the state the game should have been in at launch. It seemed to have launched at least, what, nine months too early? This should have been the launch version. Also, right now at the moment, they've got 20% off, which makes the game priced at around about £35. Now, as I've always said in many videos before, I do believe that for this stage in early access, the game is way too expensive. And this 20% discount puts it a little bit closer to where I feel the price point should be, and it's still perhaps a touch too expensive, but, you know, all said, it is much better priced. This price point is going to be available until the 4th of January. Now, in terms of uh, community sentiment, what do people feel? Well, surprisingly, yes, the game does seem to have been received very well, this new update. If we look over on Steam, we can see that with recent reviews are now hit 79%, 
When I looked earlier today, this was at 78%, so this is increasing. It looks like it's going to hit 80% very soon. This is a massive increase over the all-time reviews of 50%. So it seems that Intercept Games have done something right here and pleased a lot of people. And talking about numbers, if we have a look over on Steam Charts, we can see that the game for a very long time has had around about 150 to 200 players playing it. That's now sitting at, well, in the thousands. It's actually had the 24-hour peak of very close to 7,000 players. And this puts KSP2 in a very good position, assuming that it can maintain some of these numbers. All in all then, this is a good update. It still has a long way to go. It's still nowhere near what you can find in KSP1 science mode with, you know, if you've got a few mods in there, KSP1 is still perhaps the better game. Uh, KSP2 obviously is visually much, much better. And I know some of you are not going to be too happy at the comparison. After all, uh, KSP1 has many years of work actually put into it already, not to mention the mods. But I do think it's a reasonable comparison because a lot of people are going to want to know. Whatever way you cut it though, this is a good update. It's probably taken a little bit longer than many people would have liked. And certainly along the road, uh, Intercept Games and uh, Private Division have been far too quiet about things. This update though does seem a good indication for the future and a lot of people seem to be very happy with it right now. So there we have it, very quick look at where Kerbal Space Program 2 is right now and it seems as though it's well on the way to redeeming itself and yet yeah, being the game that it should ultimately be. Let's see what 2024 brings.